The Mechaber says that one says Shechionu, but without a kos. Right? Below kos, which is understood without a kos. Because every Shechionu, men at least, women say Shechionu without a kos, never say a kos. When they light nearest Yom Tif, right? Yom Tif candles, they say Shechionu. That's when they acknowledge the Yom Tif. But on Yom Kippur, where there is no kos, everybody says Shechionu. Okay, Vakach, Ramo Vakach, Ms. Palm Arvis. And then you'd have Marif. Vinoagin Lomar, I'll call Nidre, Baodo, Yom. Umabshin, the Gurum, I'll lie. You start to call Nidre when it's still light. And then it, you, it's drawn with Nigunim, with that chant, until nightfall. Vomim, Moshe Sholish Pomim. Yes, and it's repeated three times. Chopa, Magbia, Kolo, Yosem, Rishona. And each time it's repeated, it's louder. First it's lower, and as it's repeated, it gets louder and louder. Right, Vinislach. And then it's repeated by the call, Nislach. And then they respond, Yom Hashem Shalach Tidvarecho. While Yishana Odim Mina Goyir, I feel the Gun is very important. This is very important. One time you didn't have to say it, but today it's more important. You know? One should not change Mimnegir even with Nagunim. The tunes we sing on Yom Roy, these t- tunes go back thousands of years. This is not that was made up in Europe. This goes back to Tamar Debeis Amigdosh. There's a story, Rebellia, Rebelli Lapian. Rebelli Lapian was the last, passed away in the 60s. His Rebbe was still, he saw the altar of Kelim. Okay? He still saw the altar of Kelim. And he, he was... I told you he had Gil Elio when he was 27 years old. And. No, no, no. Rebellion Lapian had Gil Elio when he was 27. I told him just. Elio Kodnov, he came to him. What? So. Um, so. He was, the, he was in England until he moved from England. He retired. He was in the 70s. Moved to Israel in the, in, the, in the early 60s. And. They asked him to be the Mashgiach in uh, Kfar Chassidim. Kfar Chassidim's up north. They agreed. And when I say he was a Mashgiach, he was from the old school. And he was, he, he was, he was a very holy man. There's a famous story with him. The Roshiva of, of, of Kfar Chassidim's name was Rav Mishkovsky. He was a great, great Trumpet scholar. He passed away as a young man. And um, Kfar Chassidim, they still had swamps in that area. This is in the 50s, late 50s. And there were certain seasons where the boys, the students would be eaten by, they would have these big black flies. And they'd be eaten alive, literally. The Mishnah tells us in in, in, in Birke Ovos that one of the miracles that took place in the Bisamidosh, in the basement Mechaim, where they would actually dismember the Korban, there were no flies. Because flies are an indication of sin. So since it's, it's a holy location, there were no flies. So... When Rebelli would walk, Rebelli Lapian, he never saw flies around him. He would walk. I mean, that was that's that that's how he was. He was a kaddish. He was a holy person. So, um, so to Rosh Hashiva, when he spoke to the boys, not in the presence of Rebelli Lapian, he says, "You realize what kind of holy person we have here." You haven't noticed when he walks, the flies don't go near him. You other people, you have to wave away the flies, put on repellent, whatever you do. He has to do nothing. They don't go near him. He found out about it, that Rabbi Rabbi Mushkovsky said this to the students. So from that moment onward, whenever he would walk, he had a towel. He walked with a towel, and he would go like this, continuously, you know, to swish away the flies. There weren't any, <laughs> but he did it because he wanted everybody to think, you know, he's no different than anybody else, just to give you an indication of who he was. So there was a, a student who studied in Baltimore in the 50s, and he went to Kfar Chassidim. Kfar Chassidim, you know, in, in, let's say in Lakewood, there is no tune for the Chododi. The Chododi, they don't say it with a t- sing it with a tune. It's like chanted. It's a chant. They do not say it with a tune. That's the, like, Lithuanian in, in, in the yeshivas, all yeshivas, they don't sing it. Most. So, and in Far Chassidim, they said, they said Lachadodi. So, the student arrives from Baltimore, 
and he had a beautiful voice. They asked him to be the chazan. He gets up from Chododi. He sings over too. Nobody knew. The students didn't realize this was going to happen. There was stone silence. People were so petrified, they didn't participate with him. He sang himself. First of all, it was a disrespect. If, if the, if the minog of the yeshiva, nobody does, how do you go do it? So it took him. He didn't know. But he was going to he was going to break the ice over here. Whatever it is. They didn't have one of these hooks to pull him out, you know? <laughs> so what happened was, okay, he sang it. Rebellion didn't say a word to him. They asked him to go up next week. Figures he got away with the first week. We'll sing again. This time he sings another nigga. Not the tune that he sang the first week. The first nigga was a more conventional, which they sing. Second one was little with a little innovation, his own creativity. Wait, wait. I'm, I want to tell you. I'm telling you the story for a reason, which has real relevance to this. The story has relevance to this one. Tell the Ramo. Second, he sings another nigga. And Ravel comes up to me and says, you know, you did the wrong thing. This is the reason why the first time I didn't say anything, because the tune that you sang the first time is rooted in Kabbalah. It's rooted, the tune has relevance to Kabbalah. It touches upon certain spiritual worlds, and you activate certain forces. The second tune is unrelated to that. Therefore, you did the wrong thing. I'm just telling, this is what he said to Rebellion Lapian. So the Ramos says over here, that whatever nigun, whatever the tune is, you should not change that tune. The tunes we sing on Yom Naroim go back to the time of the Beis Hamikdash. It was the same chant when they said the Avoda. Most shuls, I mean, where they have the conventional uh, nigun tune, it's they're all the same. It's almost universal. The Avoda on Yom Kippur and Musa from the Chazor Shatz. That was the tune of the Avoda back Kohanim, you know, in the way they. they that tune was said in the base of Migdosh. So therefore, the Ramos says that whatever the nigun is, one should not change. I feel nigun. It's not only what you say, it's even the tune that what, what it's accompanied, that should not be altered or changed whatsoever. O piyutim shom shom, or the piyut. This was written by the, they were all Kabbalists, by the Rishonim. Also, whatever is said, we don't say everything. No, we skip certain things. But if the, whatever the meaning is to say, we say that. No, it's different, 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 different. It's like the prevents the different. It's a different Masora, different Masora. But it, it's interesting. They would, they would, right? Exactly. Could be, you know. Even though they sing it, you know, you know, you know, the Svardim were very much affected by the by the Arab culture, by the Muslim world, very much as we were affected by the, the Christian world, in a way. But, you know, I'm not, in, you know, you have to ask Howard this, you know, he has that musical ear. So, um, but could be the core of the nigan could be the same. Even though it may be embellished with the culture, or impact by the culture, but could be in the essence of certain aspects, could be the same, I'm not sure. But it's interesting, there was a person in Baltimore, come in the 60s, his father was one of the survivors of Tells in Europe, and beautiful voice, I mean, professional voice. And when he'd be in the shower, especially during the month of Elul, he'd sing in the shower. And what was the tunes? The tunes was Yom No Rum tunes. <laughs> you know, not, no words, just, just the, 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 melody. the melody. It just wasn't appropriate. So somebody went over to him and said, you know, it's not appropriate. You know, regardless of w w what you feel, what it is, this, this is a soul of something holiness. Those tunes have a holy source to it, origin. It's not appropriate to sing it in the shower. Okay. Yeah. At one time, in, in certain shuls, in you know, most shuls, there was a universal nigim, like Shabbos Mirs, among Ashkenazim. A menucha v'simcha, kori bone, was basically the same melody. Today, everybody, you know, they have their own style. I remember one time uh, there was a certain shul in the Midwest. 
they sang the, uh, the, 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 the Notre Dame's uh, footballs, uh, whatever, that's what they, they sang Kedusha with, or Birchus Kohanim. They do it. You know what I mean? Okay. What's it? What, what? She must have said, but this is Davnik. Right? There's a difference. Kedusha. It was Kedusha. It was Kedusha. Notre Dame's uh, football, uh, whatever it is. Not appropriate. <laughs> Show off the beer holes. Yeah. Hundred percent. No, Kalbach was original. He he was original. He uh, Kalbach was original. Yeah, I'm I'm talking about taking something which represents even presently. See, something of the past is the past. What they did, Chabad, or they took marching uh, songs, melodies that, and we're not aware of it today. But today, it's the same song that they sing there. That same tune they applied to the Kedusha. The two things are uh, happening simultaneously, almost. It's not appropriate. And, uh, you know, it, and it, was, it was cute, and everybody smiled and laughed when they, when they did it. You know? It's nothing. It's all nonsense. It's all it's garbage. It's all garbage. Yeah. doesn't have the feeling. Definitely. You have to have Kalbach Shabbos. Yeah. 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 100%. Came from his from his own creativity. It was his neshama. It was his neshama. He was a super genius. Super genius, Kalbach. You observing it? <laughs> that was Mama Rochel. You want to have for it? Yeah, I know. He's giving breakfast. What is it? Okay, let's see the Mr. Burrow. After, after you say we have to call while, that's what we do. While the Chazan says Shechiyonu, simultaneously everybody says it along in an undertone. But one should hurry the bracha to conclude it before the Shlich Tzibers to be able to answer Amen on the Shlich Tzibers Shechiyonu. That's what we do it. Interesting. The Shlitzibur should have in mind that anyone who wants to be Yotzi with his Brocha, he has a mind to cover them. That he should have in mind. As it seems to be, normally he doesn't have to have it in mind. Otherwise, what do we have to say? It? I mean, if he's a Shlitzibur. I'll give you an example. What's the Allah if you're middle of Shemona Esrei and they're saying Kedusha? You're supposed to be silent and have a mind to be Yotze. How are you Yotze? Right? Seemingly it's Shomei Kone. Right? <coughs> so, so if it's Shomei Kone, the one who's saying it has to have a mind to cover the one who's listening. So he always has that mind. So what do we have to speak specifically Shechiyonu? He should have a mind to cover. Why here more than any, any time? He always has that in mind. That's the reason why very often people go up to the Amud and they say Kedusha. They don't say Kodosh, Kodosh, Kodosh. They say Lumasab Rech Yomeru. Lumasab Rech Yomeru is not, it's not Kedusha. That's only for the tzibur to respond. The kedusha is kadosh and baruch kvod, but very often the shlich tzibur he doesn't say it. Sometimes you question if he says it at all. You know, he only says where it says you know chazan say. So he says lumasay says divrei kachcha, and then he con concludes. You find it less by chasidim. By chasidim they say it out. Always say kedusha out loud. Chazan always says kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Even on Shabbos, always says by. Uh, they they start from Osbako uh, Rash By by Hasidim they say Kodesh 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 even though they say what they, they sing it beautifully. 
but they start off with Kaddush, Kaddush, Kaddush. And that's, that's the right way to say it. When well, we've studied Sukkah, there's Tosa Sukkah that says that the Shlich Tzibur should say that out loud. It just it should, shouldn't say the, the conclusion. But look. No, but with the way we rule, it's true, it's true. The, the two opinions, but we rule that you remain silent and you listen. It's not a hefzer. It's not a hefzer. Right, right. But the way we rule, you, you should. But see, you're listening to something. Until you step out, it's not over. Uh, if you're in the last paragraph and they're saying it's a Kaddish, only you're only permitted to answer to, to certain Kaddish, to certain parts of Kaddish. You're permitted to answer everything up to to Skabil. The so first Omen, Omen Ishmi Rabo, even the first Omen, and the Omen's up to the Shmoni, up to. As long as you said Yilu Rotson and Rafi, even though you didn't yes. step out. Yes. But before that, the first year Rotson. But before that year, Rotson, you can't say that. You're not permitted to answer. But afterwards, you can. Yeah, but you not, but go. not, but not after. Tiskabel, th those all means one doesn't answer. Even in terms of Kedusha, you answer Kedusha. Only Borch Kodosh and Borch Kvod, not Yimloch. Because that's still, because Yimloch is not the essence of Kedusha. The essence of Kedusha is Kodosh and Borch Kvod. That's the essence of Kedusha. About kosher. Rabbi Yoshev writes, you know, you say, Asevan Shemech Asevan. That, that you should say, then step out. Or what? Kadosh and Baruch Kvod. Yeah, hundred percent. Below Kos, you say the Shechano without a cup. They came the whole Shechano. I feel them who are dying. The Bojom, Kibul Ale Le Ale Kedushas Yom Kippur and Vosel Mishdeik. Yeah, he's asking. He's addressing the thing. At a bris, you have a cup of wine. What do you do with the cup of wine? Give it to a child to drink. Give it to the the baby, or to a child. So say with the Shechano. Say, say the Shechir on the coast and take the cup, one, and give it to a child to drink. Why is it any different? Right? The Gemara Nervin asked this question. No, to a, no, to a young child. The child was going to eat and drink on Yom Tif, on Yom Kippur. Whatever it is. You can divide among the number of children. Right? He says, Kibble of the Brashim, Osele Mishti, Vinais of the Tinok, Osele Mishach, Lishos, Biabi Kippur, of Shegi, Lishnas, Yugimel. It's interesting. The Mara says, why don't you give a cup, say Kiddush on the cup, say Shekhi, you know, give it to a child. Because you're training the child to do the wrong thing. A child has to eat or drink on your crib. That's because he has to eat. He has to be sustained. But here, this is part of the ritual. You drank. They gave you the drink. You know, like you were the Shabbos Goy. So what happens when he becomes an adult? It remains to be the Shabbos Goy. So the Gemara says, why buy a bris? So what about a bris? It says you give the wine to a child to drink. Right? Either to the baby or to another child. Give it to drink. So why? Because a bris is not every, every Yom Kippur. Have there yet a bris? Here, every year, Yom Kippur, this is like something which is set in place. You say, Sheikh, I don't know, you give it to the child. A bris, it's only if the bris happened, that's when you gave it. So since it's not something on an ongoing basis, therefore the negative effect, we're not concerned about the negative effect. What? Friday night. Still, it's not the same because the, the, the basis for saying Kiddush, there is a basis, even though it's it's discouraged. It's, it's a shulchan mechaber. Mechaber says it's better not to, but if it's a minute to do it, you could do it. Mm -hmm. That's the minute. Of course, in the ancient days, people used to eat in shul. People used to eat, eat in shul, so therefore it's Kiddush Magum Suda to be continued.